here in northwest Michigan today looking at an extreme example of a European brown rot infection that occurs on tart cherry varieties. Uh, the variety we're looking at is Balaton. This is uh, very highly susceptible to uh, the European brown rot fungus Monolinea laxa. So this fungus is adapted to cold weather conditions and it infects during bloom. All it needs is a little bit of wetness uh, and temperatures can be as low as 40 to 50 degrees and this fungus is very well adapted to infecting flowers. Infection can be initiated even before the flower is open uh, or while flowers are open. The fungus then infects the flower and after that it starts to invade the shoot. You can see here this shoot uh, showing again showing the European brown rot symptoms. The flowers have been killed then the fungus invades the inside of the shoot and that causes a wilt or a dieback of the shoot and what we're seeing here is, is advanced, stages of, advanced stages of this disease where the entire shoot tip uh, is killed by the fungus. The inoculum for this disease comes from fungal spores and those spores are actually produced on uh, infection from last year. So the fungus overwinters in these kinds of dead shoot tips and then produces new spores from those tips the subsequent year. So here we have an example of a shoot tip uh, or a spur actually in this case that was killed by the European brown rot fungus. That shoot stayed on the tree. The fungus overwintered in that and then spores are produced from those shoot tips. Those spores are timed to be released just prior to and during bloom of the subsequent season. So as we look through this tree, we can see many examples of uh, these uh, overwintered last year's infections and those that produce the inoculum. And then what led to this uh, kind of drastic infection this year was we had a long wetting period during bloom and we had two days where the relative humidity stayed about 90%. So we had wetting, we had cold temperatures, and we also had extended periods of, of very high humidities and that was a very favorable for infection by the brown rot fungus. What other factors uh, could we figure out that could contribute to uh, the extensive European brown rot infections that we noticed this season? One could be cold or, or potentially freezing temperatures. Uh, where we saw uh, in, in orchard situations where we saw increased levels of infection, uh, usually those were in low pockets of the orchard. So lower pockets of the orchard are more susceptible to freeze damage, for example, and that may have facilitated infection in this case. We saw temperatures of 31, 32 degrees uh, during bloom when we, at the timings when we think the European brown rot infections occurred this year, and again in lower pockets, uh, those trees may have become more susceptible due to frost injury. Another situation uh, or possibility that could have facilitated European brown rot infection uh, would be orchard sites that have very poor air movement and so they'd have a much longer uh, time periods needed to dry tissues following wetting events. Uh, where we saw infections occurring this year, uh, basically in every situation we saw, the orchards were surrounded by windbreak trees. So in this case, we've got an orchard block that has heavy brown rot infection. It's actually surrounded on three sides by these windbreak trees. So that's going to really restrict air movement through this orchard. It's going to take a lot longer to dry tissue that becomes wet. When we have long wetting periods combined with high humidity situations, that really facilitates fungal infection because that allows the time and uh, the time of wetness for the fungal spore to germinate and infect that tissue uh, and really cause the infection events that we saw. Again, where we saw excessive, and I'm talking about 80% levels of infection in trees, those orchards were surrounded on at least two sides by windbreaks and we could tell that the air movement through those orchards was very restricted.